Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do an altered cigar box. Um, I especially want to show you how to get this very thin aged look to the paint so that you can see your background pieces that you've collaged on. You can see the the text through the thin paint technique. It gives a very fun, thin, very quick, very easy technique, real quick. First, you're going to need just a, a cigar box. Of course, I bought this one at the yard sale, 50 cents, good price. You'll need some collage materials. This is a an old encyclopedia. We'll need some paint, crackle gel, which is the cheap one layer, one step variety. These are some stamps, some clear stamps, and some stays on ink. Obviously, paint brushes, water pot for your paints, and some gloss medium, gel medium, doesn't have to be glossy. First we're going to put this on, spread your gloss, your gel medium onto your box. You get a nice even layer. The older your papers are, the more they'll be prone to wrinkling if they get moist from the gel medium. So you want to make sure your medium isn't too thick and is in a nice, as even a layer as you can get it. I'm just going to tear off some pages. Really push them down good. Right now I'm not going to worry about the overhang because I will go back through and trim that off. Or tear it off. However you want to do it. Go through and make sure the layer is nice and even. Seal that real good. You can see it's kind of wrinkling up a little bit, and you just work with it. Push it down. It's probably got some excess worked up underneath. You want to be careful when you're doing this because you can tear your your old pages. I'm just going to tear this off. Scrape it off with your fingernail. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's kind of the fun of it if it's nice and torn on the edges. Especially the older and thinner, like the, the dictionary pages and the, the old uh, encyclopedia pages get a nice nice thin when they get wet they tear and cut easily so it's easy to smooth the edges you can do this all with a paintbrush I just like to get my hands dirty sometimes okay you have that. You're going to let that dry. Make sure you've got the, you can wipe the edges. Make sure you don't have any drips hanging.
and we'll come back to that when it's dry. Okay, now that this is dry, I'm going to put some crackle gel on it. It doesn't take a lot. And we're just going to work it in one direction. Putting a nice little coat. Let me just follow the directions on this. Put a nice little coat. You want it to be a little thicker. You don't want it to be real thin. You want it to smooth on very nicely and kind of sit on top. If you do it too thin, your cracks are going to be very, very tiny and you're probably not going to be very happy with the result. So we're going to let this dry. Take any drips that come off. And you want to let that dry until it's tacky, not until it's completely dry. Um, it, it tells how to use it on the instructions on the bottle. So we'll let that dry and then we'll continue. Okay, now that our crackle gel is ready, we're going to mix some paint with some water and make it very, very thin. You can see how watery that is. It's really watered down. And make sure you mix it really well. I want clumps of paint floating around. Going to get some on our brush and really kind of soak your brush in it. I'm going to paint it in the direction that we want our cracks to run. So we're going to paint it like this, just laying it down, barely even touching the crackle gel at all. Just Really just lightly laying it down. And we're just going to let it set for a second. We're going to tilt it so it can run down a little. Create some fun, very interesting stripes as the cracks form. Just want to let that run a little bit. Tap it, make it run a little faster if you're impatient like me. And we're just going to let that set flat and let that dry completely and then we'll go on to our next step. Okay, our box is now dry. I uh, went ahead and shot it with a little bit of heat from a heat gun to help it dry faster. If you want to do that, I would wait until the paint sits on the crackle medium for a little bit, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then hit it with the crack with the heat gun. Um, that'll give it a chance to really react with the crackle gel um, in, in order to form the cracks. So, we've got our nice crackled surface. You can see some of the cracks in that. I'm going to take 
some timber brown that stays on permanent ink pad. And this is, these are just a couple of clear stamps stuck onto a piece of acrylic. And actually this is a piece of plexiglass that I got at a book store that was closing down. It was a piece of a, a display and it works very well for my larger stamps. So I was excited to find that. You don't have to buy those expensive acrylic blocks that they sell in the stamp stores. You can use a use an old uh, clear plastic shoe box. I've used those before. You can use pretty much anything that you can see through that's hard. You can stick these stamps to. Okay, I just use that ink pad to ink the stamp up. And we're just going to push that down. And it gives a nice little decorative edge. I'm going to do that again. And after I this stays on stamp pads, they dry, tend to dry out pretty quickly. So after I have stamped or inked my stamp, I'll go ahead and stick this little cover back on. Even if I'm about to use it again, it just keeps them fresh longer. It'll make your stamp pads last longer for you. So I'm just going to ink that stamp back up again. And I'm going to put it on this side. I like to hang it over the edge a little bit. Make sure I've got a good stamp because I definitely don't want this line of this stamp where I can see it. So I hang it off the edge a little bit. And there's that. And I also have, this is the a large dragonfly stamp uh, made by Tattered Angels. I love their stamps and their products. Their Glimmer Mist is wonderful. So I'm just going to ink this stamp up really well. It's the first time I've used this stamp, obviously. And just kind of play with it and decide where you want it. Put it right in the middle. Always hold the stamp down and then use your other hand to press. You just hold it down with this hand and then press with this. This keeps your stamp from rocking back and forth and making sure you have a good even stamp. Now you can see my box is a little uneven, so I didn't get a very good stamping right here. So the nice thing about clear stamps is you can see where to stamp them at. So you can go back in and ink it again. And you can go back and looking directly over the top, holding on both sides very carefully so that it doesn't stamp before you're ready. You just set it down. Make sure you've got that section stamped really well. I'm going to go ahead and open this box. Push it from the bottom. So I think my lid is bending. So, there we go. That's nice. 